Now, my name is Fernando Lopez. Uh, I am an architect by profession. I devoted myself to the building of uh, furniture. So I am designing and furnishing area of business. I suffer from Parkinson's, that, uh, which is a movement disorder. Uh, you get stiff, uh, you can't move. Uh, and tango, the music, allows me to move and to move harmoniously. I, I try to uh, explain that with uh, my doctors and then they figure that there's another program that that uh, brain program that actually commands the movement in dancing. But it's a very different phenomenon that uh, is not easy to explain. Uh, it looks like the, move, the movement is, uh, is guided by the music. Well, the way tango came to my life, it was very early on. Uh, in Chile, my home country, uh, they love tango as almost in any other country. I decided to tackle because it is, I want to die without frustration. <laughs> no, no, you cannot go, yes. So I, I discovered someone by the name of Brian Lopez, who happens to be not my relative, but uh, someone with, uh, that I, I like the way the tango was danced, uh, the elegance, uh, the, the beauty of the movement. Who is my partner? My best partner is my daughter, right here. <laughs> I am Samantha Lopez. Um, it's definitely helped him mentally. Um, something I studied in psychology has always been behavioral studies, and that was my major in university. So when he was talking to me about how he was a little bit afraid of how his body would react with the Parkinson's and what does that mean for him, I would look up the current research and moving was one of the biggest things don't stop moving, keep exercising. And I mentioned to him different studies about um, music and how that affects different parts of your brain and how Parkinson's actually is more affiliated with what we traditionally use. So our cognitive side and then the music side actually uses the other side of your brain, which we don't use as often, and it tends to be affected last. It's the same thing with dementia patients. Um, so it's a way to help him change his mentality and I would sometimes help him hear the beat and so I would take his hand and subtly pulse with my fingers um, or I'll be in his ear kind of saying wait pause feel take a breath three years ago I did get married and one of the things that we opted to do was a father-daughter dance in tango so we did an Argentine tango and uh, we had special costumes and we got changed and it was something that we could share together. Um, looking forward to it every week is something that we do as well and we used to do a few performances before he had his diagnosis. He's a little self-conscious right now, um, but that's understandable. So I'm happy to report at this point that, in fact, the doctor said you have regressed. In other words, it's not progression, it's the, it's the, it's the opposite. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. Now, the reasons? Who knows? Maybe the tango has a lot to do with it. Maybe other stuff like cycling, for example. I, I, so you cycle? I do cycling. Yeah. Yeah. And I also like to do monkey stuff, like, for example, riding the bike backwards. In many other areas, for example, in my work, it doesn't it doesn't get affected. No. It doesn't get affected. No. I could actually draw. In fact, with with a little bit of a character, with my lines are a little bit shaky, but people love it because it gives you character. <laughs> well, the way tango came to my life, it was very early on. It gives you. A, a sense of happiness, 
by virtue of the fact that you're, you're doing something that you're not supposed to be able to do. Uh, defying all the odds uh, is, makes you a great, uh, like a big gratification. And also knowing that, that you are just beginning and you could actually advance, I'm sure that I could do better.